Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to be going through Arena. Um, I'll touch quickly on the basics of the, the league system and stuff like that, and then I'm going to go into um, the types of teams you want to build when you start looking towards um, building specific teams for Arena. Um, there will be an infinite amount of options, but I'm just going to cover the three main ones that I've found um, are very relevant in the game at the moment. So the first thing is those leagues. So um, basically, if you hit the leagues tab, It'll bring up a ranking system. There'll be a green line at the top up there and then a red line down the bottom. And the basic is to it, um, if you're above the green line, you'll go up a league at the end of the week. If you're below the red line, you'll go down a league at the end of the week. And if you're in between, then you'll just stay in the same league. You can hit this rewards tab to have a look at the different leagues and rewards that there are. Um, but yeah, basically, early game, when you're still leveling, you haven't got a... Uh, glyph dungeon team fully made for farming level 10s and stuff like that uh you're going to want to stay this is my opinion anyway you'd want to stay in the lower leagues because even though you'll want your focus to be well for me anyway in this game i like to focus on a, on arena late game um to be good at, a, at uh, arena you've got to really focus on the pve early so getting your dungeons getting your glyphs through um so yeah you'll want to be setting a weak defense so just doing something like this, setting a one monster unglyphed, uh, just something that people can beat easily so that you'll get beat a lot, stay in those lower leagues, and then um, hopefully you'll have some easier people in your revenge log, which you can see just down the bottom. Um, those are people that have attacked you that you can attack back. Um, hopefully you'll have some weaker enemies there that you can beat as well. Um, but also early game for, for your arena offense, just use whatever you're using for your... Um, progression dungeon scenario team um, basically the idea is you're, you're hoping to stay low enough that the games are easy enough just to do use that basic team um, to progress through one thing to watch out for is early game is that ice knight he's got that shield um, i'm pretty sure everyone would have experienced one match where they end up in a never-ending battle against an ice knight because maybe you're using your own ice knight or something like that and you just can't kill each other um, through that shield um, so something good early game to bring to that is a beneficial block. Um, something like the Wind Unicorn, which uh, is a great progression monster anyway, has that beneficial block which lets you get through that sort of mechanic. But just something to be wary of early game. You can end up with those never-ending fights. And another thing is with those never-ending fights that you have to quit, you actually get no reputation for them. Whereas if you lose a fight, uh, you get one reputation. So another thing early game, if you're finding that if you go through, uh, refresh your pairings as many times as you can and you still can't find a enemy you can beat, what you can do is you can just uh, attack an enemy but use a weak monster so that you get beaten quickly. You'll still get a bit of reputation. I think it's one reputation for a loss. Um, and you'll lower your rating, which your goal is to stay low anyway. So... That's just something to think about, um, at least, the, at least, and then you're at least spending your arena energy and not letting it cap and making use of it somehow. Um, moving into the team building, um, when you look at specific teams for arena, like I said, for your offense, there's the great thing about these games is there's an, an um, infinite amount of teams that you can actually build, all the different mechanics in the game, but I'm just going to do a very basic one covering the three main types. Um, that I see as being really relevant at the moment. And they are the, the Nuke team, the Poison Control team, and the Bruiser team. Um, there will be lots of others, but uh, the first one I'll look at is the Nuke team. Normally an AoE monster with a high attack, um, high attack on AoE damage. Um, and the things you want to include in that team are an attack bar boost. Um, this is to allow your whole team to move first and actually get all your monsters attacking before the enemy even has a turn. Um, you'll also, because you'll normally be using an attacker, you'll want a, an attack buff. Um, you'll also want a defense break to weaken the enemies. And then you'll want your big nuke monster. Later on, you'll also want to consider a purging monster. Um, that's for when people start using immunity glyphs. I'm in Gold League 1, and I still don't see too many immunity glyphs. I bring my purger with me just in case, but um, that's just something to consider. In the lower leagues, uh, you'll be yeah, I'm hard pressed to find people with immunity glyphs because I think most people will still be farming the Wrath Dungeon. 
Um, but and the key when you're team building this, these sorts of teams in Arena is you've only got four slots. So those things I listed, there's actually five roles there in the attack, attack, attack bar boost, attack buff, defense break, the nuke monster, and the purge. So that's where it's vital to try and find units that cover multiple roles. So for me in my team, I'm lucky to have lucky enough to have the Earth uh, Justicar, who fills the role of my attack bar booster and my attack buffer. Um, there's a lot of other things to consider like um, base speeds and stuff like that. I'm not going to go too in depth, so I'll keep that. I'll I'll do a more in depth video. Um, I will end up putting a lot of arena content out. So this is just a basic team building guide. But um, so he does the attack buff and the attack bar boost also has a crit damage buff but for people who don't have him obviously he's not that common um, there are more options you have the firebird um, this guy is also a um, a good a decent poisoner a, a, just a good all-round unit so you might be using him in your progression team anyway and um, he has the attack buff and attack bar boost obviously stuff goes up with skill ups but that's a monster that fills two roles um, another one we can look at, which is basically a cheap version of that um, Earth Justicar, is the Earth Fox. It has um, the attack bar boost, it has the attack buff and the critical damage buff. Um, obviously it's a lower attack bar boost, meaning your team would have to be faster and closer to it, but still it does, it does that role that I was talking about. And then the last one I can think of off the top of my head that does those two roles is the Fire Nymph. Also a very decent healer. Um, has the attack buff and attack bar boost but the good thing about her attack bar boost is that it's 40% as a base and it skills up to 60% so she's a very good one if you're using her as your healer um, she's also got that resistance buff which gives you a chance you know a higher chance to resist enemy effects and she can also heal heal your team out in case there's um, things don't go quite right so she's another fantastic one um, so those are those three ones that filled those multiple roles if you don't happen to have any of them, you can also look at attack bar boosters. And the two other main attack bar boosters are this guy, the um, the Wind Crusader. Um, he's got that attack bar boost. He also reduces cooldowns. Not too relevant in arena in these sorts of teams because um, the idea is that you'll go first and beat them in one or two turns. Um, but he also does have the heal if fights go longer as well. The other one which is also very decent, is the two-star Earth Harpy. So she's got the attack bar boost and the speed buff. So, And once again, these will go up with skill ups, the attack bar boost and stuff like that. But those are your main attack bar boosted options. Um, and when we look at the attack buff, if you've got those other guys that already have the attack buff, you're already set for that. If not, um, the other unit I like to use is... Oh, I, ca I don't use it because I don't have it, but I, I like to consider is the water monk now he is another one because that other role that you have to fill is the defense break so the water monk has a skill if i can find him here we go on his third skill it decreases the defense of all enemies and increases the attack of all allies so that is those two roles filled that i was talking about in your attack buff and your defense break so if you don't get lucky enough to have that firebird, the fire nymph, um, the earth justica or the earth fox and you have him, you can use that harpy or the crusader and him and that's how you're completing three roles with two monsters. Um, the next thing is that defense break. So he's obviously got that. Um, two star option, there's only one, well there's two two star options. Um, you've got the fire... Um, Sphinx who has it which I'm not sure if I have one saved so I can't really show you but um, there's the fire Sphinx and also there's the water gargoyle but I would recommend using um, the fire Sphinx over the water gargoyle because his actually has a hundred percent activation rate this is only if you're very desperate for an armor breaker I'm hoping that you would have pulled something else hopefully if you're lucky enough um, the option that I use is uh, the the wind gargoyle um, he has, it's actually a very decent skill, it's um, the AOE defense break, but he's also got an 85% chance to freeze the selected enemy for two turns, which is very good. So if you get your attack bar boost off, um, get your attack bar and um, 
attack buff. So you're normally using this kind of guy when you have that Earth Zealot or the um, or the Earth Fox, Fire Nymph, Firebird. Um, if there's a real threatening enemy that you want to lock down, you just target that one and then you have a chance to freeze it for two turns getting it out of your way. So I enjoy him for it. Um, there's much better uh, four star options for that, but I'll get into them in a, li in a little bit. Um, but yeah, he, he's a good one. Um, I can't think of the other three star options off the top of my head. Leave it in the comments if you can. I know that the um, Earth uh, Felicor has one, but it's not a great chance to land. So, oh, that's the other one. The, the unit that I really want to pull to test him out is the Fire Kappa. He's just a new unit, but um, he has an incredibly good third attack. So, this one does poisons all enemies for two turns, decreases their defense for two turns, and um, haunts them, so increases the damage they take. So he is, he would be really good as your armor breaker. Um, I'm really hoping to pull one soon to test him. He's also got a really cool second skill that matches up well with his base speed, but I'll go into that in another video once I pull him because I think he will be a very relevant unit later on. Um, but yeah, after the defense break, then it's your nuker. Um, there's Basically, there's a lot of four-star um, AOE Nuka monsters. I'm using my Dragon at the moment. Um, Three-star options, you just want to look for a monster that has a high sort of base attack and if they have an AOE that inflicts great damage. So this guy I'm currently building, I'm going to five-star him next and test him out as an Arena Nuka. I'll put that in once I do have him. But um, that's the basic idea for that. You want an AOE monster with a big nuke and that completes your team. Early game, like I said, if you have those multiple role filling monsters, you can actually put a second attacker in there. Um, but if you're later game, you want to look for a purge. For me, I'm using um, my Wind Diva because she has the purge with attack bar reduction. And if they don't have immunity glyphs, I can try and um, uh, paralyze all the enemies. So she's fantastic, but a great two star option, um, which I have one not glyphed but built is this uh, Earth Ghost because she's got a very high base speed so it makes her easier to glyph and um, she has that, it only purges one uh, beneficial effect but you're only tr looking to purge the immunity glyphs. So in summary, nuking team, you need the attack bar boost, attack buff, defense break, a nuker and then later game you're looking at a purge as well which is when you start needing those five rolls filled which is when you start needing monsters that have those, uh, that can fill two rolls in that sense. Um, I'll show you quickly my my team, how it works. So I'll just go into this. It's uh, where I'm at in Arena at the moment. It's basically if I outspeed, I win. If I don't, I lose. So we'll see how we go. But um, so there's my Justica. He does the attack bar boost, fills my attack bars and my allies, um, and then gives them the attack buff. And then because there's no immunity glyphs, I'm going to go for the paralyze with her. Um, and then now Harpies, are another one that is very threatening. I'll go into the, the, the um, sorry, not Harpy, Succubus, the Fire Succubus. I'll go into her in another video. You can use another strategy with them where they can just basically one-shot anyone. Um, but I'll, I'll go, in, like I said, I'll go into that later, but that's the real threatening monster there. So I wanted to freeze her. That's why I used my Gargoyle attack on that. And now I'll use my Dragon's AoE and try and wipe out the whole team. And that's pretty much how an AoE nuke team works. Um, it's very quick when it works and it's very quick when it doesn't because you lose quick so that's the first team um, the second sort of team that uh, you look at is much easier on your requirements of monsters and it normally has monsters that you would be building for other content anyway and that's the poison control build so the poison control build the kind of things you really want is an attack bar boost which is um, same as the others, you don't need the attack buff with it. So something like the Earth Harpy or the Wind Crusader are fine for it. Um, the next thing you want is control. So you want CC. And my favorite option for this is the Water Basilisk, especially skilled up. He's fantastic for tower trials anyway. So he's a great monster to build anyway. Um, and then just having him for arena as well is a second bonus. So he's got the AOE two turn freeze on a four turn cooldown. He's amazing. Um, the other thing you want is, so you've got your booster, uh, your CC is your poisoner. So you want a preferably AOE poisons, um, something like earth basilisk, wind assassin, if you're lucky enough and have the earth, 
uh, Felicor, anything with poisons just to keep the pressure up to wear the enemies down. Um, and then for the other role you want is the is a purger late game, but like I said, early game that doesn't matter as much. So early game, um, something that else that you would really like is more CC or more poison. Um, something like even I'm not going to say the wind basilisk because he's too hard to glyph early on, but attack bar manipulation. So the the thing I really like about this Earth Ghost is she has that purge. But she also has the attack bar manipulation with her third skill, an AOE attack bar reduction. So the idea is that you want, by the time all of your enemies come out of that freeze from the Basilisk, to be able to reapply it and then just wear down your enemies with the, the freeze, the attack bar manipulation and the poisoning. So I'm working on a two-star arena team that is going to be able to scale with your glyph quality and and i'm going to test it on the next glyph removal to see how it works but it uses this basic concept of using control poison um and speed to basically just lock out your enemy the whole time so i'll put that out when it's out but that's that that's probably the easiest uh form of team for people to start making because it uses a lot of monsters you'd have anyway so the, th the those key things again are the attack bar boost the crowd control, the CC, which is your freeze, stuns, anything that locks your enemies out, um, poison, and the purge. Um, and then the last style of team I wanted to look at was going to be the bruiser type. Um, so bruisers are monsters that, they're tanky monsters that deal damage based on their HP and defense. So um, things like, th there's one at the moment which... HP scaling seems very strong at the moment. It actually seems like it does more damage than attack uh, based units on some scales. So it's an iffy one for me at the moment, but th there is one monster at the moment which is absolutely killing it, and that is the Earth Giant. So if you are lucky enough to pull him, um, congratulations, because his third skill, uh, it can. I, I just get. Uh, one shot by him without him having um without me having defense break or anything on me he just one shots my team um and the great thing about these bruiser units is that they can they can deal high damage with these uh hp and stuff uh attacks but they also survive a lot longer making it a much more viable option um for the sustained fight um other units include even the ice knight because the ice knight he, his scaling is really good at the moment too because his second skill deals great it um, specifies great damage it has a higher um, scaling damage um, and once again he's really tanky and annoying to get through so yeah those bruiser comps normally you want to have tanky monsters damage based on um, their HP or defense or something like that um, you also want to have something in that team with some sustain even something like the water tree it's very annoying it's got that poison mail the defense buff he has hot, very high base HP. Um, his auto attack does a lot of damage because it's based off HP as well. Um, he's got that heal that keeps your team alive. Anything like that. Another good thing to have in these bruiser comps is either the, those poison options or an armor break. Um, just because armor break is um, going to make you do more damage to your enemies. But if you're fighting an enemy that has that is using that sort of speed attacker type um, team and they don't kill you in the first turn normally your bruiser comp is going to win overall but bruisers are basically um, just it, it's more if you get lucky pulling units um, this guy's more of a tank than a bruiser but same thing he just has that he's tanky he has a passive where he just does damage to the enemies when they attack him so that's bruisers there's not too much in depth to go into bru bruisers they're just tanky monsters deal damage and survive out, outlast your enemy and then wear them down um, but yeah, that's pretty much the basics for Arena. Like I said, I will be making a lot more Arena-based videos. Um, Arena will be my main focus in this game uh, once I get much later game. So I'm already trying to push up the ladder. But I hope this sort of helps you guys early game, progressing into making your first teams. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Cheers.